Welcome to another audit video, and this is an audit video where I'm going to be auditing the grammar of the quantum-bank.world website, among other things. Now, for, at first glance, I see the colon tied up against the first letter of the fact in these titles. And I see a full stop at the end of the titles. So that's a good sign. That means that this individual, whoever wrote this, has a decent grasp of the grammar. And that they've probably been watching my channel. Which, thank you for your viewership, whoever the author of this channel is. We start to see clues of who the author is or who taught the author their grammar because we see a compound no contract word here we have two non-tangible contract words and then a tangible contract words who we are and if there are spaces in between those words and not hyphens and it was a fiction sentence, which it is a fiction sentence. It's just someone just took a fiction sentence and hyphenated it and put colon in front of it to make it appear to be correct sentence structure. But it's not, folks. But if it was who we are in the fiction, that would be a pronoun adverb dangling participle verb. So why would you put a pronoun, adverb, dangling participle, verb, hyphenate it, and try to make a correct sentence structure, unless you didn't know what the hell you were doing? Keep in mind, folks, when you're writing out your correct sentence structure, those facts that come after those colons must be given closure to in a dictionary, in your contract dictionary, because everything is contract. So home would have to have a correct sentence structure, finite mean closure. Who hyphen we hyphen are would have to have a correct sentence structure, finite mean closure, which I would like and be curious to see what the author would provide if I asked them for their finite mean for who hyphen we hyphen are, which is supposed to be a compound fact. Not only that, but they would also have to give closures to who, W H O. They'd have to give closure to we, W-E, and they would also have to give closure to R, A-R-E. So that's four finite means for that one compound fact, which it's quantum gobbledygook, folks. So let's scroll on down here, and then we see for the starting, we see a particle of negation. No contract modifier in this fact here. Oh, and then we have a positional ON. Have you ever heard of a positional ON? I know there's four of, with, and by. Because four is congruent with by. Of is congruent with with. Four is the cause. Of is the concern. With is the possessive. And by is the authority, i.e., one word, one meaning, one function, one congruency, one and one is one, but then we have on. So if we already have a cause, we already have a concern, we already have a possessive and authority, then what is this? What is on? What, what function does on serve? It's a rhetorical question, folks. And then we have is with a claim of the life. So the positional sequencing is incorrect. The concatenation is incorrect 
and it voids the mathematical interface because it doesn't end on an authority. Remember when I said for is congruent with by? Well, there's no by here, so you can't read this backwards. It wouldn't read for the life of a claim. It would have to read with the life of a claim. And according to the rules of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, according to the mechanics, every sentence must start with a cause, whether you're going forwards or backwards. So it's with the life of a claim is, and then what, what is congruent with on? Let, not, let alone the function, what's, the, what's congruent with it? If for is congruent with by, of is congruent with with, and on, I guess off would be congruent with it, so it's off the quantum path by the starting. So again, this is quantum gobbledygook. It does not maintain the mathematical interface when you read it backwards, let alone forwards. Because in the mathematical interface, 1 plus 2 equals 3, 3 minus 2 equals 1, the factors, the 1, 2, and 3, remain the same. They retain the same value forwards and backwards. But when you look at the facts in this, life, claim, quantum path, and starting, they don't maintain the same value forwards and backwards because on the quantum path, meaning in my mind, you're on something. Then when you read it backwards, it's off the quantum path. Now the quantum path is different. You're not on it anymore. You're off it when you read it backwards. So again, this betrays a critical deficiency in the knowledge level of whoever the author is uh, latest news for the latest closures and data of the quantum bank let's see what this says federal serve system for the federal serve system authorization but oh my goodness they put an authority before the verb. The authority always comes at the end, folks, because by is congruent with for in order to maintain the mathematical, the integrity of the mathematical interface. So whoever wrote this is, wow, critically deficient in knowledge. Folks, this word comptroller is really funny. Uh, I actually looked it up. And throughout history, when you go back in history, comptroller was a misspelling of the word controller, which has a particle of negation in it. Yes, I know. But comptroller was an actual misspelling historically of the word controller. But for some reason, it stuck. So that title, comptroller, is based on a mistake and a misspelling. Isn't that funny? Okay, so we have, let's go to the last positional of the... Fence secretary with the James of the Mattis. And then you have a colon here, folks. And then you have all caps in italics, Donald J. Trump. So what do I see here? According to correct sentence structure mechanics, according to fiction styles manuals, and according to most people that know about this stuff, Italics are not on the page. They function the same as brackets, quotations. It's not there. So what do we see? We see a colon, a space, and because Donald J. Trump is not there, there's another space after the P. So that's a double space after this colon, which is a break in the continuance of the evidence because it is excessive spacing. You would never use italics in this way. And again, to prove it down here again, here we go again. More italics. See? All the way down to here. So you have a, a large space here, and then a space after Citibank. Let me move my picture here. Citibank. See? See this space right here? And this space here. And not only that, you have ampersand, colon, space, and then because this is not here, because this is in italics, 
you have hyphen tilde burn hyphen tilde Switzerland. So you have ampersand colon space hyphen tilde burn hyphen tilde Switzerland period. It's crazy that people pay money for this type of grammar. Now you see, now you see the colon space, colon space, colon space. All of this is incorrect. Colon space, colon space, colon space. And we have the dangling participle colon, the ever famous dangling participle colon. <laughs> I'm not going to click on any video here because the last time I tried to do any kind of reaction or audit video to their, these people's stuff, they immediately contacted YouTube to try to get a copyright strike against me to try and get my channel taken down. Because they can't do anything with correct sentence structure, so they try to attack me through the fiction. Another dangling participle, colon. So many mistakes here. So many. Oh, look at this. Spanish contract translations. I will tell you what. That is 100% bullshit. Because I know the individual who worked with them on that. They worked with... The people, Russell's followers, whatever, Russell's cult, the person that I know worked with them to do this, started to. But the person that worked with them didn't know the grammar at the time. They had a little bit of knowledge about it, but they didn't know it. And so what they shared with them was wrong. It was incorrect grammar, and yet these people took this Spanish translation into quantum grammar and started selling it. Never mind that they didn't give the guy that I'm talking about any credit. They didn't pay him. Didn't give him credit. They just took his, his shit and stole it. And began selling it. I know the guy because he's my student now. One of my best students. Not going to say their name. But this man. So much scamming going on here folks so much they're selling claim of the live uh claim of the live life for two hundred dollars okay folks ladies and gentlemen boys and girls children of 18 or over personally and this is the position i have held since i started this stuff back in 2017 no one should have to pay for a claim of the live life. No one. No one, no one, no one. It should be available to everyone for free. Everyone should have the opportunity to create their own claim of the live life. Anyone who wants to sell it or to try and bottleneck the concept is obviously trying to make a buck, number one, and number two, trying to maintain control over people. Someone like that would probably put their name in the copyright copy claim section of a live life claim so that they own the live life claim of the individual they're selling it to. So if you're buying this claim of the live life for $200, you're buying this document, but you're also giving the author of the document, i.e. Russell J. Gould, ownership and copyright copy claim of your live life. It's that simple, folks. It's that simple. So I've, I've always felt that it should, you shouldn't be charged for it. Prior to 2018, no one was charged for a claim of the live life. I even have a video with David Wim Miller standing, giving a seminar with Russell J. Gould right beside him. And David says, literally, do not send us your live life claims. They're yours. You take them and do what you're going to do with them. We don't need them. You didn't need their permission. You didn't need David's thumbprint. You didn't have to pay for it because he gave you a template in his book or on his website. 
and it was up to you to figure out how to do the rest. When David passed away, suddenly everything changed. Now suddenly everything's behind a paywall. Suddenly the witness mechanics have changed. Whereas before you had to have three live life claim witnesses to certify that you are a living, breathing creature. Now you only need one claimant. And it's one particular claimant, and his name is Russell J. Gould. And he doesn't even need to witness you. He doesn't even have to meet you or see you or anything. He just needs a fiction driving license or a fiction passport or a fiction social security card. You send that to him, and then uh, just like on a com conveyor belt, he just uh, autographs, thumbprint, boom, out the door. There's another 200 bucks. There's a live life claim. Done. And it's not correct grammatically, and it's not correct mechanically, because no one has witnessed you. Sure, he witnessed your fiction credentials, but he didn't witness you. He never met you, never looked you in the eye. He doesn't know if you're really a living, breathing creature, but he knows you exist in the fiction. So, I digress. No one should have to pay for a claim of the live life. Well... It's your choice if you want to pay for a claim of the live life, but the option is available to you to create your own if you know the grammar. You can create your own claim of the live life. So let's go to the frequently asked questions. Of the fake hyphen teachers and of the space with the space fiction websites. Oh my goodness. This is terrible, horrendous grammar. Thank goodness, oh, here we go, dangling participle colon. Thank goodness most of it is in the, uh, is in brackets. If you don't have the facts or substantial knowledge of how fiction harvests, you are ripe for the harvesting. Well, it takes one to know one. And these folks are doing a hell of a lot of harvesting with their $200 live life claims and their $75 bridge passes. I'll tell you that right now. And the people that come onto this website, they don't know it. They don't know they're being harvested. But that's up to them to find out, folks. Seriously, it's up to them. Everybody can make their own choice. I get into these conversations with people all the time where, oh, people don't know any better. Oh, they were tricked. They were fooled. They were led wrong. Well, folks, being led is a choice. If you choose to follow someone, that's your choice, ladies and gentlemen. No one is twisting your arm or holding a firearm to your head telling you that you have to follow RJG or, or whoever. No one. No one's twisting your arm to watch this video. It's all a choice. Always keep that in mind. It's a choice. If your website or teacher is not on our authorized list, then beware. Teaching incorrectly has led to jail time, money stolen, and worse. That's really funny. Money stolen coming from this guy. Claim of the lives without authorization or joinder. Chief is the sole shareholder to the technology since Dave Miller surrendered the flag and since passed away. Well, my comment on that and my position on that is, well, there's a couple things. They said Dave Miller surrendered the flag. So that means that there was some sort of conflict, correct? Just right off rip, looking at the, the basis of what the wording here. So if you surrender, that means you were fighting, right? So if you surrender, that means you were coerced into giving something up because you were beaten. And war negates contract. So right off rip, there is no contract for a flag or grammar because by Russell's own witness testimony in the Reno seminars back in 2018, he literally 
beat David up and force David to give the copyrights and the flag to him, Russell. So that's basically rape and coercion. So my position is there is no contract for that stuff because war negates contract and what happened there was an act of war. Not only that, but show me any correct grammar that this guy has done. In order to even begin to think about claiming a copyright of a correct grammar, you would first have to be able to use that correct grammar. It stands to reason, right? You have to have closure because this whole thing is about closure. And whoever wrote this stuff, whoever wrote their claim of the live life that they're selling for 200 bucks, whoever wrote Russell's contracts, quite obviously does not have closure on the grammar, which I have shown again and again and again and again. Fake or fiction names. Lady Crown is a made-up name on a proclamation, not a legal name. So there's a hint, ladies and gentlemen. There's a red flag for you. Russell J. Gould and his people obviously only cognize legal names. And what is legal? Legal is fiction system. So if you only recognize legal names, then you're part of the legal system. With a live life claim, as you, as creator of that, a creative living vital force, you can use whatever name you create that you want to create. If you want to use an upper and lower case uh, fiction name that perhaps was on your birth certificate, you can do that. As long as you, you know, create it in a consistent upper lower case style. Or you don't even have to use that name. You can create one on your own. Who is he or anyone else to tell you what you can create, what you can't create, and what your name is or what your name isn't? This is fiction system mentality, folks. The fiction system tells you that's your name on your birth certificate. This is your legal name. That's effing illegal, right? This is fiction concepts. These are fiction concepts, okay? Lady Crown can use whatever name she wants to if she authorizes it. If these yahoos don't want to contract with her, they're obviously not going to contract with her. But that's the name she chooses to use as the authority of her construct. Then if you want to contract with her, that's the name you use, regardless of what the legal system thinks, regardless of what RJG thinks, what I think, or anyone thinks. Do you get my point? Authority is rooted in knowledge. Authority comes from the author. The author makes the rules. Using quantum grammar and now space without joint or authorization by the chief. So you have to have Russell J. Gould's permission to exist in the now space. So Russell J. Gould claims to own the now space. He claims to possess the now space. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, folks, if you're going to buy into something like that, well, you're going to see a return on that. You just might not like it. Notice how Purple Thumb community uses their signatures on their documents and website pages. Signatures equals nom de guerre, dead man's name. Folks, read that again. Notice how Purple Thumb community uses their signatures. Signatures equals nom de guerre, dead entity. Okay. So they're saying these are signatures. Well, that's interesting. Check this out. On Russell J. Gould's claim of being Postmaster General, he provides this receipt. 
this registered mail receipt as evidence that he's Postmaster General. Well, folks, what do you suppose this is right here? Do you see what I'm seeing right here? Russell J. Gould in cursive. And this is, again, what he provided as evidence for his claim of being Postmaster General. Look at that real close, ladies and gentlemen. That is a cursive signature. Cursive. Signatures equals nom de guerre. So that means that by Russell's own teaching, he signed his Postmaster General claim as a nom de guerre, a dead entity. So it's null and void. You heard it here first. Actually, I've said this many other times, uh, just repeating it. Oh, look, <laughs> Mark has shown Christopher, and he spells Mark's name wrong because Mark uses a lowercase k, which is incorrect in his name. And whoever offered this website can't even get that right. Folks, the number zero has not been positioned correctly, but I'm not going to go into every little thing or we'll be here all day long. So he gives a YouTube channel. This this must be really old. This site has not been updated in a few years because Mark has been kicked off YouTube for a long time. This is interesting. Look, this is not my correct name. All right, they've all capped me. Maybe that's a, a Freudian slip. Maybe they want me to be dead. <laughs> I'm sure they'd be happy about that. Um... So check it out. I, they, at least they give my email address. So hopefully some people have contacted me through this site. Thank you very much. Uh, Lady Crown. Uh, TJ Mars, you are law. Richard Majon. Leon Edwards, Vincent Galindo, never heard of that. Okay, so I've heard of most of these people. But mostly these people that are mentioned on this list are just people that don't want to kiss Russell J. Gould's ass. Whether they have closure on the grammar or not, I'm not going to go into here. But I can tell you for sure that there is no evidence that Russell J. Gould has closure on correct sentence structure. And I've just proven that again for the umpteenth time. Let's see if we have any other things we can look at here. If this will set us free from the system, why do we need to pay with the system money to be added to it? Shouldn't this not only be free, but also be easy for the native landborn man? And the answer is you are welcome to study, learn, and navigate for yourself. Those wishing joinder with the chief and learning technology is presented, however, may choose this path suits them. May choose this path suits them? Again, folks, plain, simple English. You can learn it in grade school. Maybe maybe work on getting past that second grade le reading level. Just a suggestion. He has spent 24 years learning this technology. <laughs> this is the result of 24 years, eh? Okay, and when no, no one else took the helm, claim of the life is for those wishing to be out of the birth certificate system now and sovereign for themselves. Okay, so let's take, for the last thing we're going to talk about here, you are welcome to study, learn, and navigate for yourself. Okay? Sure, you are. But the minute you step out and try to be autonomous in the public, and move around in the public trying to become a steward and master of your own words and your own contracts and your own vessels on YouTube or anywhere else out there in the public, this man and his people will begin to attack you.
because they don't want you out here. Maybe you might take some money away from them. Maybe someone will decide not to send them 200 bucks for a claim of the live life. Maybe someone will instead decide to invest in learning to study and navigate for their own damn selves, learn the grammar, create their own claim of the live life, and they don't need the Russell J. Gould crutch to lean on. They can just do it themselves because any man or woman can do it themselves. No man or woman is better or worse than another. It's all rule one, rule equal, folks. The same thing the fiction system does with their judges and their courts, you can do too with correct sentence structure, if you so choose. You can claim whatever you want to as long as you can back it up with the continuance of the evidence. Unlike these people who basically navigate through what I would call a psychological operation of the mind where they get people to believe in what they're doing without evidence because none of them have closure on the grammar and this, what I've just shown you, is more proof of it. And I said it before, I'll say it again. For me, this is a scam because there is no proof no actual physical proof, documented proof, that anyone in Russell J. Gould's construct, including himself, has closure on the grammar. Number two, they sell live life claims, which prior to 2018, no one did. Live life claims were free. All that stuff was free. You were welcome to come in and use it. David Wynn Miller was preaching that for years with Russell right beside him. Never did Russell ever step forward and say, you know, Dave, we should start charging people for this. We should, we should make people get our authorization to use it. We shouldn't just give it away. No, he never said that. No, he waited until after David passed away, and then he gradually started implementing the bottlenecking, the classification, the hiding, the exclusivity of it. So the same thing, basically, that he accused David Wood Miller of doing, like he accused David Wood Miller of only teaching the elite, the Rothschilds, the Clintons, or whomever, you know, the Rockefellers, that David supposedly was only teaching them. You know, he was keeping it from the public. Well, Russell's doing the same thing. Same principle. He's put it behind a paywall. He's made it seem like you need him to even exist right now and that is trickery of epic proportions folks now i expect some backlash from this video i really really do uh i don't expect this to go unanswered so i mean we'll see what happens but this was fun to do and i am passionate about it i i hope that came through you're more than welcome to leave your comments, criticisms, uh, confessions, whatever you want to do, as long as it's grammar related. And I'll be sure to get to it in the next comments video. Thank you for watching. Peace. If you would like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, I offer several choices. The first one, and the easiest one, is to study the almost 900 free public videos on this YouTube channel that you're watching right now. The second option, if you want to see new content, is to click the join button on my main YouTube page or under any video that you're watching. Click the join button and you will see two tiers of membership. If you choose the second tier, the loyalist contributor tier, and you join that for a monthly support donation, you'll get new content fresh content exclusive content not available to the public every month but keep in mind there's already almost 900 videos here free to the public to study and the third option is to contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen and this is for the serious students only and apply for a correct grammar workshop but please include your correct name when contacting me and I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation and you and I will have a conversation. You can ask me whatever you want. 
I'll answer your questions. I'll do the same with you. I'll ask you questions and we'll see if indeed you are really serious or not. Thank you.